Okay, so welcome to day four. Now we're going to review points of concurrency. Remember, we have our benchmark December 20th for math. So we try to make sure we get all of the things that we need to get reviewed. Please watch these videos. Watch them several times if you need to and get someone to help you. And also I offer tutoring on Wednesdays. So the standard we're going to look at now, this is, some of it is new and some of it is not new. We're going to, const well, we're going to talk about the inscribed angles, um, inscribed and circumscribed circles of a triangle, and we're not going to do the second part. We're just going to do the per first part. Uh, so what you're going to learn is what an in-center, circumcenter, and centroid is, and how to identify an angle bisector, perpendicular bisector, and a median. All of these keywords I am going to go over while we um, go through. Well, let me go ahead and talk about angle bisector. An angle bisector looks like this. You're going to have a angle in the middle, and then you're going to have a line that is going to split this angle in half. So this angle, this line AB, if I have angle CDA, line segment AB is called an angle bisector and that splits the angle in half. A perpendicular bisector is when you have a line segment and I'm going to call that AB and then you have another line segment that comes through there and I'm going to call it CD. CD is a perpendicular bisector. It splits line segment AB in half and it splits it when it crosses it, it forms a 90 degree angle on both sides. So it goes through the midpoint of a line segment at a 90 degree angle. That's your perpendicular bisector. Okay, so let's talk about the in center. What's an in center? An in center is where, I'll show you. So I'm going to just draw a triangle on here. Well, let me see if I can find one that's not equilateral. Um, it looks like I'm going to get an equilateral one, so I won't go there. So I'm just going to draw a triangle here. All right, I'm going to call this triangle A, B, C. And in centers means that I, over oh, this side here, I'm going to create some angles in here. And then I am going to come through here and create some perpendicular bisectors. So I'm just going to draw perpendicular bisector here. I'm going to draw one here. And this is not accurate. This is just me freehanding this. And a perpendicular, not perpendicular, I'm sorry guys, angle bisectors, not perpendicular bisectors. These are angle bisectors, and these purple lines, they split these angles in half. They're not going to be the same measurements, but they're all going to get split in half. This is why I'm labeling them different marks. So three on this side, three on this side. These two are the same. These two are the same. These two are the same. So right here, where all of these meet in the middle here, is called the end center of this triangle. This is called the end center, where all of the angle bisectors meet. This is called the end center. So an end center is created by an angle bisector. Now, there is a circle that is going to be inscribed inside of this uh, angle, inside of this circle, with the, uh, inside of this triangle. So if I put a point here, a point here, and a point here, a circle is going to come here and touch the triangle at these points. Okay? So that is called an inside inscribed circle. Inscribed circle. And so your in center means that it's inside of the triangle and it's inside of the circle that is also inside of that triangle. And this is called an inscribed circle. Now, what happens to this is that our in center should be 
equal distance from the sides of this circle here. So this this end center should be equal distance from the sides of this circle. So what that means is, mm, let me see. I have a radius that's in, let me change that color. I have a radius of this circle here. Oops, hold on guys, let me get rid of that. Okay. So I have a radius here inside of this circle. And if I drag this radius around, it will be equal distance from the sides of this, um, this triangle. So it's equal distance here. So if this, if the angle, of, if the measure from the end center to this point right here on this um, triangle is five, then so would the measure of it be five here and so would the measure of it be five here. All right, so that is the gist of the end center inside of a triangle. So let me explain this again. The end center is created. The end center is created by angle bisectors. In centers, you get angle bisectors. The circle is inscribed The triangle, the circles inscribed in the triangle. All right, and the end center is equal distant from the sides of the triangle. And also, the end center is always inside of the triangle. It's always inside the triangle because that circle has to always be inside of the triangle. All right, so I want you to take all of that information, answer this question here, and here's your word bank. Okay, so let's talk about the circumcenter. I am going to draw a triangle here. Now, how is the circumcenter created? Well, the circumcenter is created by perpendicular bisectors. Okay, the circumcenter is created by perpendicular bisectors. So what happens here? is in order to create a perpendicular bisector, I find the midpoints of each side, and I'm eyeballing this here. Find the midpoints of each side, and then I am going to draw a line through these. So here, there you go. That's perpendicular bisector on that side. I'm gonna do the same on this side. Put two marks here because I don't know what the actual measurements of these are. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this side. And I'm going to put three marks here because I don't know what the measure of these sides are. But those are perpendicular bisectors. And the symbols that you normally see when you have a perpendicular bisector, well, we'll talk about that in class. So these are perpendicular bisectors here. And where all of these points meet at in the middle is called your circumcenter. That is your circumcenter. Now, here's the thing. So when you have a circumcenter, then you are going to have a circle on the outside of on the outside of the triangle now. So you have a circle on the outside of the triangle and that circle 
it's called it is called a circumscribed circle this one here is circumscribed circle so that means this is on the outside of the triangle whereas the other one is an inscribed circle in the end center so our circumcenter is created by perpendicular bisectors and we have a circumscribed circle here now I am going to draw a radius for this watch this so I'm gonna go in here and put a radius so my end center is the radius of this circle and I am going to draw a line here so if I drag this around then the circumcenter is equal distance from the vertices of the triangle now see if I drag this around it's going to touch that one it's going to touch that one so my circumcenter is equal distance from the vertices of the triangle. So if this is 5, so the distance from here to here would also be 5, and the distance from here to here would also be 5. So let me give you all these facts again. The circumcenter is created by perpendicular. This is the symbol for perpendicular bisectors. is also equal distance from the vertices of the triangle the circumcenter is uh, has what we call a circumscribed circle which means the circle is outside of the triangle. Oops, hold on, let me correct that spelling. And here's the one thing that's different is sometimes the, the circumcenter can be outside of the triangle. If you have a, um, let me see if I can extend this size. If you have a triangle that's not equilateral, sometimes the circumcenter can be outside. So the circumcenter can be inside or outside of the triangle. but the rules still mean the same thing. So your circumcenter can be inside of the triangle or your circumcenter can be outside of the triangle. Let me write that a little bit neater. Give me a second, let me fix this up. So the circumcenter can be inside of the triangle or outside of the triangle. That's a special one, but it's still gonna be equal distant from the vertices and the circle that you draw through the vertices will always still um, go through the vertices and that circumcenter still will be equal distance from those vertices. So it, it can be the circumcenter can be inside or outside of the triangle. It can be one of those places got options on that one okay so go ahead um, work on this problem when you're ready unpause the video and come back to it so now let's talk about the centroid so I'm going to draw another triangle and I'm going to call this A call the vertices A B and C okay so a centroid is created by the medians. So you find the middle of each line. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take that, you're going to draw a line from 
the middle of the line to the vertex of the opposite side. So middle of the line, vertex to the opposite side. And if you have two, then the third one's automatically middle of the line to the vertex of the opposite side. So while all of these points meet at, mine is not perfect, but it's close enough. This is called the centroid. And it's created by the medians. These red dotted lines are called medians. And how you find them is you find the middle of the line segment and then you connect it to the vertex of the opposite side. That is called your centroid. Now, um, there are no special circles inside of the centroids. So this one is just, it is what it is on this one. So let me run down your uh, properties. Well, this side would be the same as this side. These two sides here would be the same and these two sides here would be the same. So a centroid is created by medians. Um, medians, you find, um, is the midpoint. Well, okay, so your median is created by finding the midpoint. And then connect it to the opposite vertex. And you are in the game there. And the centroid is always inside the circle. I'm sorry, always inside of the triangle. All right, so use that information and go ahead and answer this question here. And go ahead and complete these questions and I will see you guys in class tomorrow. Bye.